First of all, thank you, Waira, for that opening blessing, um, and thanks for coming. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Waira was part of this, the study that we did in Peru uh, with Charles Grove and Dennis McKenna, so uh, I'll show a little bit of uh, the results of that uh, during my talk, uh, possibly probably during lunch. First of all, um, I'd just like to see a show of hands. Uh, how many in the audience have never, ever taken any psychedelic substance? Great, okay. How many have taken uh, one at least once or twice or maybe three times? Wow, okay. And how many more than that? Okay, good. <laughs> so we've got a nice variety here, and I, I'm uh, particularly glad to see hands go up for people who've never tried it because I, I'm glad there's the curiosity about that. Because um, as you know, we're in the middle of a psychedelic renaissance, a lot of great stuff coming up, and uh, really excited about this conference because we need to get this information out there. As you know, there's a lot of misinformation going around, uh, you know, uh, adumbrations from the um, from the 60s on when um, everything became Schedule One substance. Um, so let me just go through a few slides real quickly. Uh, again, uh, as mentioned, I started the Los Angeles Medicinal Plant Society that meets once a month uh, here at UCLA. Uh, probably have a sign-up sheet going around, so if anyone wants to uh, get on that, then uh, let me know. Um, and again, I just want to show the, the schedule here. You, you've all seen it, but I'm just so happy and proud of this, this lineup because this is phenomenal. Um, and I think you're in for a real treat uh, with some of the best speakers in the world coming here. And we're competing against a, a, another conference in the Czech Republic, so you know, I'm just uh, really happy that we retained a lot of the, the best speakers. I, I think we have a better lineup than they do, but uh, I'm a little biased, but... Um, and I want to first give thanks to the planning committee. And, um, you know, obviously we're not MAPS. We don't have a lot of resources. This is all a volunteer effort. And this is all people who have day jobs, and nobody got paid for this. So just to, just to get this uh, here and in whatever form it's going to take, and it looks like it's taken a good form so far, then... I just want to thank the planning committee uh, for all the hard work and uh, for making this thing happen because obviously this is a, a huge undertaking and it, it took a lot, a lot of planning as you can probably uh, uh, understand. And I want to thank MAPS for being our fiscal sponsor for this and uh, all the sponsors and partners who will be thanking a, a little bit later on. Uh, you'll see their, their names They're also on the website. Uh, I want to thank the presenters, speakers, uh, musicians, and artists, and the psychedelic community, and especially you for showing up. Um, this is a very important uh, process, to getting this word out and spreading it, and uh, the more people can uh, throw conferences like this and at attend them, I think the better, because that's the only way we're going to change the uh, current paradigm um, for this amazing type of medicine. Uh, I think I'll save this for later, but as you know, there's, there's a, a big need for uh, plant medicine research and psychedelic research because the tre current treatments we have now for depression, anxiety, PTSD, and so forth, while they, uh, a lot of people have been helped by different medicines and different techniques, there's uh, a big need for um, better treatments. And uh, as, as you're going to see in these next few days, I think there's a lot of promise with um, a lot of these compounds. Uh, I think I'll skip this for later. Yeah, maybe I'll just... Okay. I think I'll skip everything. And uh, <laughs> um, So again, I'll probably... If, and if, if there's a no-show or something, I'll take up the time with, with my presentation. But I really want to get to... Oh, okay, I've got 10 minutes, I guess. Okay, good. So I guess I can fill that up. Um, let's go back. <laughs> Improvise here, guys, okay. So uh, for depression and anxiety, as you know, the, um, there's huge numbers of people suffering from depression and anxiety. And uh, I, I just picked that because I, I, most of my background is in depression research and uh, know that um, uh, a lot of the medicines on the mar uh, market right now are a blessing for many people, save a lot of lives and stuff, but uh, it doesn't help everyone. and. Um, uh, up to 50% are not are not helped by some of these medicines, and uh, the numbers are growing in terms of people suffering from these. Close to 10% of the world's population is affected, and mental disorders account for 30% of the global uh, non-fatal disease burden. So number one cause of absenteeism in the workplace. 15% of patients with depression commit suicide. 
Many patients, uh, up to half in some estimates, do not respond to antidepressants. 20% don't get response to any treatment. And, uh, and that's just depression and anxiety. There's uh, addictions, PTSD, and the whole um, panoply of different uh, ailments that uh, there's a lot of wonderful promise in terms of this, this, these types of compounds. Uh, real quickly, um, I think most of you probably heard of all these terms, but in case you haven't, um, psychedelics uh, means mind manifesting, mind revealing, and that's the, the term we used for this because most people know that, that term and, and uh, are familiar with it. Hallucinogens is kind of uh, an old term that, you know, generating hallucinogen, hallucinations or, you know, things that aren't, aren't real. And so that was dropped in favor of psychedelics. Now entheogens is, is a new term um, that's making the rounds. And has everyone here heard about entheogens? Do you know what it means? Okay, well, so it's uh, generating the God within, a divinity within. So it's kind of like the new term um, highlighting the fact that these compounds can um, be great for not just depression, anxiety, for, for spiritual growth and uh, generate mystical experiences and change people's lives that way. And you're going to see... Uh, several speakers talk about the mystical experience um, for uh, psilocybin, for um, uh, ayahuasca, iboga, and so forth. So, and the, uh, just, these are just some of the, the antigens or psychedelics that we're going to be covering today. Uh, this is a sheet of LSD. Uh, MDMA, we're going to have a panel specifically on that and uh, another speaker talking about um, some of the wonderful MDMA research going on. Uh, peyote. Unfortunately, we didn't get any speakers for peyote. Um, hoping to rectify that next time. There's not a lot, it's kind of not as much research on that, but um, there needs to be a lot more because it's another one of the, the great uh, entheogens. This is Iboga, where we have a, a panel. Um, people, uh, some people are going to talk about um, Ibogaine Iboga research. Ayahuasca. Um, again, we have a panel on that, and uh, Dennis McKenna is going to be talking about uh, his experience over the last 45 years with ayahuasca, which is going to be excellent. Uh, cannabis, which isn't um, typically considered as a psychedelic or hallucinogen or entheogen, but um, as many of you know, if you've taken a, a large enough edible dose, uh, it can get you there. Um, and there's a lot of great research. We have Sue Sisley sitting front here, who's going to be talking about the wonderful research with cannabis. And just to let you know, I think of October, uh, we're having CanMed here at UCLA too. So uh, it's going to be at the Luskin, which is, um, I think, that way. So if you're interested in that, uh, check that out. Ketamine. Uh, a lot of fascinating research with ketamines. We have a speaker on that. Uh, DMT. This is, I believe, NN DMT, but we have a whole panel on 5-MeO DMT, which is going to be uh, very exciting tomorrow. Uh, this is the Sonoran Desert Toad, uh, uh, the, the only animal source of DMT. Um, I believe that's true, right? 5-MeO <laughs> DMT. And uh, psilocybin mushrooms, which uh, is really making the, the rounds now in terms of uh, research uh, from Johns Hopkins, uh, NYU, and so forth, um, and which started actually at Harbor UCLA with uh, Charles Grobe's research um, with people um, with stage 4 cancer. So. Great stuff coming up, and it's going to be really exciting. Uh, how much more time? Five minutes. Uh, four minutes, okay. So as you know, uh, most of you probably know, all these substances, including cannabis, are Schedule One controlled substances. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it, they're deemed as uh, having a high potential for abuse, no currently accepted medical use in treatment in the U.S., lack of accepted safety for use, uh, use of the drug or substance under medical supervision, and just uh, as a little fun fact, uh, heroin and bath salts are also on Schedule 1. Uh, bath salts not being Epsom salts, but the, the bad street drug. And alcohol and tobacco are not scheduled. So just, you know, that's a little koan for you to uh, meditate on. You know, why, why is that? You know, if uh, th the whole idea is to, to keep us safe and uh, protect us, then, you know, why are these amazing compounds that you're going to see over the next two days on Schedule 1, and which obviously don't fit these criteria and, you know, a lot of other things are not scheduled. And this is kind of a, this is in your schedule also. Uh, I, I love this chart because this was um, created by Professor David Nutt over in, uh, I, be, I believe he's in London. And he was fired for making this, by the way. Um, but it shows uh, the, the relative harm caused by the drugs. And this is harm, the, the dark 
is showing harm um, to others, and the lighter is harm to users. And as you can see at the top, alcohol is the big culprit. This goes up to 100, but it shows. Um, and uh, but if you look down here, the, the LSD mushrooms, these, these are at the bottom. These are relatively safe. I mean, there's, there are dangers to this, and we don't want to gloss over that. But if you learn, look in terms of uh, relative to these other uh, drugs and compounds, you know, they're, so for the first part, remember, for Schedule 1, uh, the safety aspect. Well, I do know about it. But it seems to be relatively safe. So, and uh, we're going to hear people talk about that later on that in terms of the, the possible harms and safety and so forth. Uh, in terms of efficacy or no uh, medical value, I just want to show a couple of the, the slides from uh, what's coming out of MAPS, Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, who's kind of been like the, the flagship for this whole thing. Uh, when everything went to Schedule 1, Rick Doblin did a great job in, in keeping the movement going forward. And now we're at the cusp of uh, getting MDMA off Schedule 1 to be used in uh, uh, MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for the treatment of PTSD. And as you can see here, uh, for people to get in the study, they had to reach a certain level of, um, on the CAPS score, which is a measure of PTSD. So before treatment, 100% of them uh, qualified for PTSD. But after psychotherapy alone, there about 14% or so uh, were no longer met the criteria for PTSD. When you combine that with the MDMA, look at that. There's uh, like almost, uh, I mean, huge percent are uh, helped by the medicine and in conjunction with um, the psychotherapy. And this just shows another uh, way of doing it. Before treatment, this is the average CAP score. Two months later, um, this is the average CAP score. And they wanted to see if, it, is this just a flash in the pan? Is people gonna go back to the symptoms later on? But uh, actually around four years later, it actually went down a little bit. So this isn't just something that uh, gives temporary relief. It seems to be something that sticks and improves over time. Uh, are you ready? Okay. Um, I'll just go with this, this last one before we turn it over to Gormate. Uh, this is, shows relative effect size, which is a, a statistical measure of uh, the strength of um, an, a different um, treatment. As you can see, this is for depression. So you do nothing, um, not very effective. Um, people do get uh, temporary, some people do get remission from depression by not doing anything, it goes away, but typically not a good thing. Placebo, the power of the mind, you know, shows that some, uh, has some effect. This is psychotherapy and medication, you know, has a good effect. And look at psilocybin, uh, huge effect. If, if this is at, at two weeks and then three months, so, it, you know, it's still holding, so. Exciting stuff happening.